Welcome to Supernatural Results. I'm your host, Pitana Mutana, and uh, we're doing a quick series of a message that I believe is very crucial for the time we are in, and I want to call it Wisdom for His Coming. Wisdom for His Coming. It is a message that the Lord has given to me that I, I believe that I need to get out as quickly as I can because wisdom is going to be the, the decider in our time. Wisdom for his coming. When it comes to the Lord's coming, to his, what we call his rapture, or when he comes and one is taken, another one is left, what is going to separate those who stay behind and those who don't? It's wisdom. And it's amazing when you study the scriptures, how many things are attributed to wisdom that we never thought of. And we'll go through these in many different ways. But before we start, let's just ask God to give us understanding that as you hear, you have an ear to hear, you have an eye to see, you have a heart that understands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every viewer that you will give them understanding of all things. Even as I talked about in the last program about understanding all things, that they will not miss out in receiving wisdom. Your word says that he that lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives generously and doesn't rebuke those who come and ask him. Father, I pray that they will be found to be wise. As your word says, that who is that faithful and wise servant that you will find when you come? So, Father, I pray that your people, those that are hearing me, wherever this message will go, that they will pay, they will pay attention to wisdom. And it is, it is one of the chief attributes that you want your people to have to prepare for your coming. Will you help them, I pray. Help me also that I will minister with your Holy Spirit sent down from above. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to take my text from a, a text that we maybe most people are familiar with. <clears throat> and it's out of Matthew 25. And we will also probably go back into Matthew 24. And you will see how this is connected and it has to do with Jesus, Jesus is coming or what we call the rapture. Where some people are taken and others are left. Where one was, two people were working and one disappears and another one is, is left. And so, <clears throat> and this is where I want to, to take it to show you that it's wisdom that separates, that will separate those who go and those who are remain. I, I think this may go against maybe some of the popular beliefs that just everyone in the church will be raptured, but that's not what the scripture teaches. <laughs> and hopefully that will stir you up not to be angry or anything, but actually to go and search the scriptures. Because the, the, the Bible talks about that the people in Berea were more nobles. And they went and searched the scriptures to see if these things were so. <clears throat> so let's look at this scripture. Matthew 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. As you can see, they're all virgins. But yet some were wise and others were foolish. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. This is our time where we're taking our lamps and we are going forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. This should be a striking message that should put fear in the heart of anyone who placed no value on the oil. Who places no value on the anointing of the Holy Spirit? <clears throat> Who places no value on oil that is the one that is responsible for light? If before even God made anything, he first said, light be, let there be light. And there cannot be light without the anointing, without the oil. This is where there is a difference between wisdom and foolishness. And I know this can be very offensive, but we have to give the word as it is. The difference here, what they're showing us is that the wise took oil in their lamps. They thought, well, if we are going to meet him, what if he comes during the night? We can't just assume that he's going to come during the day when there is the light of the sun. If it's during the night, we need to be ready and have oil so that we can be able to turn on our lamps and be able to know where we're going as we go to meet him. But those who were foolish, they were both born again. They were both virgins. But they said, ah, I'm sure we'll figure out something. 
May the Lord help us. This message is not just for you, it's for me. Maybe you are, you are the greatest planner on the, on the planet. I, it's not my greatest strength, if I may call it, but I have to get it down. When it comes to his coming, I don't want to be found here left behind. Trust me, the tribulation, the Bible, it makes it clear that it's a day, it's a time that of great trouble that has never been on the face of the earth from the time the earth was created. So it's the worst time ever. But also, the book of Revelation is clear that there were many souls found before the altar of God, crying and saying, Lord, avenge our blood. He said that this had come from the great tribulation. So out of the great tribulation, there will be people who will be saved during that time, or people who didn't pay attention to, to making sure that they have oil in their lamps. And they found themselves behind. And they had to go through it. You know, the scripture gives us a warning. And it says that, judge yourself lest you be judged. And so the Lord first gives you time. He said that you make the, the right decisions. Or if I make the right decision, for, if I make the decision for you, it may not be as pretty as you want it. And so it's the message I'm bringing also. It says that, let us be found to be wise. We are going to read in Matthew 24 also how the Lord says that when he comes, Two things he's looking for, faith and wisdom. Because he says that who is the faithful and wise servant whom his Lord shall find giving meat to his servant, I mean to his household, meat, do meat in due season, giving them the right material, teaching them the right things that prepares them for his coming. And so here he says that. Matthew 25 and verse 2. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And you will see soon how they presumed that those who took um, oil in their lamps, that they were going to share with them, which ended up not being the case. You know, the scripture said that if you be wise, be wise for yourself. Yes, it's true. We actually are supposed to probably have more so that we can share with others. But what if we only have enough and you find yourself in a, in a place, you first have to take care of yourself and your own. And so this is such a warning and such that we all need to pay heed. I believe the Lord gave me this message. Hopefully that it will help the body of Christ. Hopefully that I will go back. I, I, you know I will go back and listen to this message myself. Because there's something that I need to get out of it. I don't pretend to think that I'm the, as wise as I could be. <laughs> Definitely want to have the same wisdom as Solomon asked for wisdom, and he received it. <clears throat> and he says this, While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Ah, what a picture of a person who finds himself that others have been raptured and they were not raptured. The regret, the <clears throat> and look at the, the, at, the, at the foolish virgins, and he says this. And afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. So even in the time where the people have been already been raptured, you will still be able to get oil for your, for your lamp. You will still be able to get light, revelation. You will still be able to be in a place where you can be saved, grow in the things of God. But it will be in such a tough times. You will have wished that you would have been prepared before. And here the word of God is giving us instructions of what we should do to make sure that we are ready for his coming. <laughs> I saw the Lord's coming. I saw him come. He said that he comes with ten thousands of his saints. I saw him come in a company with people. He looked very rushed. I'm just telling you, 
We don't have time to be distracted right now. We don't have time to be, he, it's sooner than you think. <laughs> he said at the time of the son of man, it's like the time of uh, Noah or Lot, where people are happy, they are giving in marriage, they are eating and drinking, they are, so you, it's a time where we think things are okay. People are now are marrying people, and people are eating and drinking. It's not a time of famine. It's not, but all of a sudden, this event will take place. And then all of a sudden, people will realize, what? <laughs> I'm not saying this to scare you, but to prepare you, to warn you, to say, Get oil in your lamps. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be as anointed as you can be. The Bible says that lack no oil on your head. And let your clothes be always white. It's not time for us to be distracted. It's a time for us to apply wisdom like never before. It's a time for us to go before God. He has said that if you lack wisdom, come to me. I will give you liberally i will give you generously i won't rebuke you for asking me for wisdom we are going to go through this i'm just this is just the introduction to this hopefully it may take me a few programs to to finish this message but to get you started to realize the the principality if i can use that word or the the how the chiefdom the how uh the most precious thing that we need to get now is wisdom and we'll go through the scripture. You will see how wisdom is attributed for almost anything you can think of in life. It's the, this, the Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And so, as we continue this story, <clears throat> Matthew 25 and verse 11, Afterward came also the other version, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. They are virgins. The only thing that separates us, if we, for God to know us, we need to have wisdom. He said that if you're not wise, I don't know you. I don't hang around anyone who's not wise. Think of it. They were both virgins. The difference was some were wise, others were not. And those who were not wise, he said, no. He said, I don't know you. Remember, there was a scripture also where Jesus said that they will come to me and say that, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not worked mighty work? Have we not done this and this? He said, depart from me. I never knew you. Wisdom, wisdom tells you spend time in God's presence. Wisdom tells you sit and talk to God and say, my name is Pitana. My name is Pitana and I was born in such and such a place. In case you don't know me well, God, the, I'm making an introduction to you. I don't want to find myself hearing from you saying that you don't know me. I know you know me, but this knowledge, it's, it's, it's knowledge that comes from us spending time with God. Yeah, he knows all of us as his creation. Sure. But for him today, I, to, I know you, you, I know you. I know you by name. You know, God knew all the children of Israel. He delivered them from Egypt. But he told Moses, he said that you, you have found fa favor in my sight because I know you by name. You have to ask, ask yourself, does God know me by name? <laughs> How can God tell people who served him? This ought to, to, to scare us. There's certain things about God that should give us the fear of the Lord. How can God who knows us, not just... You know, you, you can say that, oh, maybe people who never got born again or people who, don't, who didn't bother to seek God, people who didn't call upon the name of the Lord, maybe God doesn't know them. But here comes a company of people who were in the service of God, who have moved mountains, who have worked miracles, who have, and Jesus said that, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Which God is this who is so generous as to give his gifts, the power to, to entrust his power to people he calls workers of iniquities? Now you understand why he, he can use Satan to do all kinds of things. <laughs> ah. This God we serve. May we get to know him. May he get to know us. Be found yourself. Like I said, exercise yourself. Go sit down somewhere and say, God. Just in case you don't know who I am, my name is Pitana Mutana. I was born in such and such a place. I grew up 
<laughs> you will think, are you serious? Actually, you think you can do that? Yeah, why not? Because I want God to know me. I want to be at a place to say, God, I came and I, I introduced myself. <laughs> do you want God to know me that much that you will become as crazy as what I'm talking about? Where you come and make a, a, a formal introduction. Though in your mind you think, God knows me. This great assumption is one of the things that you need to get out of your out of you fast. The idea that God knows it, knows what I need, therefore He should just go ahead and do it. That's why most people never get anything from God. Jesus, when he came and he was the express image of God and studied the gospels, he would act as if he doesn't know anything. He would look at a blind man and he says, What do you want me to do for you? I hope you get this. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear you introduce yourself. How can you ask a blind man and say, what do you want me to do for you? What, what else does a blind man want? In the book of Genesis, it says this, that God came to Abraham in the time where he was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he's talking to Abraham. Go look at it. And he says that, let's, let's find this scripture. You know, because... A lot of people assume there is so much that people get in trouble because people will say, but, but you know this. But this is common sense. You should know it. No, I don't. Never assume anything with, with anyone. Even if you think you know. Even if you think 99, 99%, this is the answer that person is going to give me. Don't assume. Still ask them. If you think, I know him, he's going to say no. He has said no to this 10 times. I know exactly what he's going to say. Still ask the 11th time. Let him tell you no again. Then you're not assuming. He told you no. You know it. Because at the 11th time, he can tell you yes. And you had assumed that he's going to say no. And you miss out. Anyways, let's go to Genesis chapter, I believe, 18. And you will see... A side of God that I don't think we take time to talk about. And this has caused so much stress on people because they have assumed that God knows. Since he knows, if he wants to give it to me, he will give it to me. And so he comes in the book of James and he says that you don't have because you don't ask. How many people assume on God? Well, I would never ask God this. And so they never get it because they assume God doesn't, uh, God is not into this and that. <laughs> Let's look at it. Genesis, I believe it's 18. <clears throat> um, yes, Genesis chapter 18. <clears throat> and let's start with verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him that he will commend his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Now, this is what I'm coming to. Look, just pay attention to this. Genesis 18, 20 and, and down. And he says this, And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see, <laughs> and see whether <clears throat> they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their face from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Look at that scripture. Please take time and go and read it again. God himself, he said that the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah, their sin is grievous. He, from heaven, he could see that their sin had gone beyond anything. I mean, they had become just like what we have now. Men were sleeping with men and they wanted even to sleep with these angels. <laughs> and God says, this is too much. But I will not assume. I won't stay in heaven. I will go down myself. So he came down and he said, I'm going to go down to see really if actually that the level of wickedness, it's according to the cry that I heard. 
the cry of people being abused, wondering where is God in the midst of this abuse, and came to God's ears. And he could see, but he said that I will not assume. I'm going to go down myself and see, and I will know if really it's as, it's, it's as bad as it is, or if maybe it's not as bad as it is, or if it's worse than even that I heard. This is God saying. This is not somebody saying that this is what I heard God say. This is God. Oh, I hope somebody's getting this. If God, who we know that he knows all things, and he's everywhere and he can see everything, he chooses to act as if, he just, he just gives himself just a little bit more, just in case if he, maybe he didn't see it properly. I will go down myself and see for sure. So how about you and you, you and, you and me? How many times have you assumed? How many times have you just assumed? <laughs> I'm going to give you a story. As I <laughs> and I'll try this. This story hopefully will lighten this message because so far it seems like it's been a heavy message. But hopefully it will make you laugh. But it proves the point. I pray that you will never assume for the rest of all your life. That I will never assume anything. That I will be a person if I don't understand something. That I will come and ask plainly. Instead of thinking that I look at something and I think it's rice, but maybe it's not rice, it's, it's, it's quinoa or it's, and I, and I say, well, you know, I don't like rice, but I, I know I like quinoa. But looking from, a, from five feet from away, I think it's quinoa. I think it's rice. And so I step away from it and I miss out. Don't assume anything. Our ministry from the beginning, the Lord told me, he said, don't assume anything. Because I didn't assume anything, I will go to churches. They look so lively. I will say, my, 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 God is in this place. But I will, still, I will still ask if there was anybody in the congregation who doesn't have Jesus as their Savior. This is for church people. If you don't know Jesus, this will not apply to you. But if you've been in church so long, how can somebody become a nasher in a church? How can somebody be in a church for years and they be the first one to stamp up and come? How can pastor's children be the ones to come? And the pastor say, oh, my son also that is not saved? Yeah, those are my stories. I've seen many people come to Jesus, get saved inside the church. People have been there for long, long. Where everybody looks at them and say, oh, Becky, you too? Yeah, because I didn't assume. I did not look at the music so lively. I did not see the preaching, how powerful and charismatic it is. I did not see... I did not assume people seem like they're speaking in tongues or this or that, and I say, God is in this place. No. Let me give you a story as I finish about. I don't know if this story is true. It might be true, but I heard it, and it's. <laughs> there was this. This is as it goes that there was this couple that moved into. If you can imagine three apartment buildings, they're all one here, another one here, another one here, and they all have the same parking lot. So from apartment A, B, and C, you can see everyone coming into the parking because the parking is right in front of the three apartments. So now this couple moves into apartment B, husband and wife, <clears throat> and the man will come. <clears throat> he will go pick up his wife from work or something. So they will come together. And as soon as they park, the men will go around and open for his wife. And so now we have women who are homemakers. They're not going to work. And they are, you know, they're, they're, you know they just seem to be in the, you know, on the window around 5.30 as people are coming in, you know, coming from work. And these ladies from different, you know, they kind of knew each other. And they started to see this man. How he goes around and opens the door for his wife every single time without fail. They watch this for maybe a week or two. And of course, they start to talk. They say, have you seen so-and-so, the new, the new couple in the, in the apartment B? And they're talking, they say, wow, he's such a gentleman. He's, you know, they're going on and on and on and on. And they couldn't help themselves. They say, we need to come down one of these days because we know they get here around 5.30. And we need to go and just let the men know just how appreciative how just we've been inspired, we're talking to our husband, how, you know, they should be more gentle and gentlemen, just like this man. We need to go and tell him. <laughs> and so at 5.30, they line up right in front of the parking lot, and the man, as they usually get there around 5.30, as he does it every time, he turns off the car, goes around, 
opens the door for his wife. She comes out. They go in. So this time, they stop the man. They say, please, can we talk to you for a minute? I think the wife, you know, continues as she steps on the side. And the lady said, that we have, we have watched you the way every single time without faith. You get here on 530, you go around, you open the door for your wife. And the man gave him a look. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can make the look and say, what? Is, because they were telling me, they say, you're such a gentleman. We're, you know, we're, we're on the case for our husband, but then they should learn the same and do the same. And he looked at them so disgusted. And so he's like, me? I don't like opening doors. This door is faulty. And so I have to go around and open for her. But I don't like opening doors. <laughs> oh, I hope you got it. If you don't think that's funny, I suppose, I don't know what's going to make you laugh. What's the point of the story? What's the moral of the story? Here, the women saw a man every single day coming and opening the door for his wife. And they assume that the man from the heart, as we all should be gentlemen as we could be, and open doors for our wives and so forth. But here the man, he was actually not a gentleman. He didn't like opening doors. He was, the door of the car on the wife's side was broken. It could only open from the outside. So the man had no other um, choice but to go around every time and open for his wife. And here, from the women's standpoint, watching them, they think the guy is a gentleman. The guy is disgusted every time opening the door for his wife. What's the moral of the story? They assumed the guy is a gentleman, yet he doesn't like opening doors. He, the, the door is faulty. It's the same thing we do every single time. Our perception, we would assume, oh, that person. This and this and this. When you talk to them, you find it's the opposite of even what they believe. You can look at a person, you can hear even one message and in 30 seconds of a message, come up to a conclusion. You need to take time and listen to somebody for two weeks to get really what they believe. Anyways, I hope you're, <laughs> you've been blessed and hopefully even challenged never to make assumptions. Somebody said the assumption will be the lowest form of wisdom. I, I don't know how, how wisdom can have a low form. Maybe that will be just the assumption that it's foolish. May we be found to be wise. Who is that faithful and wise servant whom his Lord shall find, giving his household meat in due season? 